reproduction in plants. We will learn about pollination, kinds of pollination, agents of pollination, pollinators, kinds of reproduction, fertilization in plants, formation of seeds and fruits, pollination, the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the carpel is called pollination. With the help of this process, the male sex cell, sperm, reaches the female sex cell, egg. Sex cells are also called gametes. Wind, insects, animals and water are the agents for pollination in different plants. Parts of a flower, most flowers have four main parts, i.e. sepals, petals, stamens and carpels. Green sepals protect the flower from the sun and rain and bud form. The colored petals attract insects and other animals for the pollination of the flower. Stamens are the male parts of a flower. Each stamen has a filament and an anther. Pollen grains are produced in anthers. Carpels are the female parts of a flower. Each carpel has a sticky stigma, a style and an ovary. Ovules are present in the ovary. Kinds of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower on another plant of the same kind is called cross-pollination. Poplar, willow, apple, papaya trees, etc. are cross-pollinated plants. For cross-pollination, the plants must grow flowers at the same time. Cross-pollination usually happens in plants near each other. Cross-pollination produces stronger plants as compared to the self-pollination. Some flowers have special features that favor cross-pollination, for example colored petals, long and sticky stigmas, nectar and fragrance, agents of pollination, pollinators, the agents that carry pollen grains from the anthers of flowers to the stigmas are called pollinators. Wind, water, insects, birds and bats, etc. are a few pollinators. Pollination by wind, the wind picks up pollen grains from one flower and blows it onto another. Wind pollinated plants have long stamens and carpels. Most grasses depend upon wind for their pollination. Pollination by animals, insects and some other animals can also transfer pollen grains when they move from one flower to the other. Bright colored petals, charming shapes, nectar guides and pleasant smell attract animals towards flowers. Pollen grains have rough and sticky surfaces, due to which they stick to animals' bodies. Pollination by water Pollination by water is not common but a few plants release their pollen grains into the water. The pollen grains move slowly along the water currents and reach other aquatic plants. Hydrilla, Valisneria, etc. are water pollinated plants. Kinds of reproduction Plants can reproduce in different ways. Non-flowering plants reproduce by producing spores. Flowering plants produce seeds. The type of reproduction in which a cell from only one parent develops into offspring is called asexual reproduction. Various methods of asexual reproduction are commonly found in plants. When two games one from each parent combine to form a zygote, the process is called sexual reproduction. Flowers are responsible in plants for sexual reproduction. The zygote formed in this process transforms into seed. Zygote, a male gamete, sperm, and a female gamete, egg, fuse to form a zygote. Later, the zygote develops into the seed and the seed grows into a new plant. Fertilization in plants The surface of the stigma in a flower is sticky and pollen grains stick to it. Here, a pollen tube grows out from each pollen grain. Two sperms are present in this pollen tube. The tube grows downward through the style and enters the ovary. Pollen tube finally enters an ovule and releases its sperms in it. One of the sperms combines with the egg to form zygote. The other sperm combines with another cell to make the store of food. The process of fusion of sperm with the egg is called fertilization. The male gamete, 
sperm, in the pollen grain combines with the female gamete, egg, in the ovule. Changes after fertilization, after fertilization, several changes take place in the flower. The sepals, petals and stamens dry up and fall off. The fertilized egg inside the ovary develops into embryo. Ovules become seeds. The ovary grows large and develops into a fruit. The fruit protects the seed or seeds. Formation of seeds and fruits. Many plants grow and bear fruit to protect their seeds. A seed protects the embryo inside it. In addition, shapes of seeds and fruits help in their dispersal. Seeds. After fertilization an ovule becomes a seed. The embryo and its store of food are covered by a tough seed coat. The most important part of a seed is its embryo. Embryo grows into a new plant. The embryo consists of the following parts. Radical. This part of the embryo develops into the first root of the new plant. Plumule. This part of the embryo develops into the first shoot. Stem of the new plant. Cotyledons. This part of the embryo supplies food to the first shoot, stem, of the new plant. Fruit The ripened ovary is called a fruit. The ovary wall forms the fruit wall, called the pericarp. Inside the ovary, ovules develop into seeds. The matured fruit may contain single or many seeds. The pericarp has three layers in most fruits like peaches and mangoes. The outer layer is skin, the middle layer is fleshy and the inner layer is tough or hard. Some fruits have hard and dry pericarp, for example nuts, 